Hey, Rolf, how are you doing? Hello, all good here. Just got home from uh, from the tour. So it's been kind of an easy week after that, but getting back to work soon. Yeah. Uh, how was the tour? Because you were around Europe. Uh, it was amazing. Like, I think our package was like excellent. We were touring, having like a co-headline tour with Sonata Arctica. So uh, it attracted lots of people to our shows. Plenty of them were sold out and like, I, I think the audience, audience was like very good at every play, place basically. So it yeah. was fantastic tour. So what's the the biggest memory from this tour? Uh, I must say maybe the sold out Milano Alcatraz. It was like 3000 people. So it was yeah. like amazing show for us. Yeah. You know, last time, well, before last uh, before this summer, last time that I saw Stratovarius was actually in Alcatraz Milano before I moved to Finland. So it's been a while. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. It was before you joined the band. I think it was like the last tour with Jorgen. But I, I'm not sure. <laughs> what, what yeah, he, something what around was. like 2010, yeah. 11, something, yeah. something there. Maybe it was at some point then, <laughs> but um, yeah, mm. you joined the band in 2012. Um, yes. How, how did it happen? Uh, basically, there was this audition uh, going on, and I I got contacted by Matthias through Facebook that if I would be interested, I think there was like uh, lots of applications there, but. The guys wanted to have a Finnish drummer, so I think they auditioned like eight guys, something like that. And well, I I went to the audition. I was very well prepared, practiced my ass off, basically. I learned pretty much the whole kind of set that they had been doing before. And I was supposed to play four songs, songs there, and we played those. I think it was Kiss of Judas, Part of Time. Maybe Deep Unknown, I can't remember, maybe Hunting High and Low or Black Diamond, something like that. Yeah. And we played those, and then we also chant a little bit more of those songs that I have learned as an extra for the audition. And uh, then like around like one month later, I got, had this like a second audition, so to speak. So we were just kind of jamming and just playing freely with Matthias and Lodi. Um, then I went for a dinner with Timo. And basically after that, I got the job. So it was like, I would say one and a half months, something like that, five, six weeks, maybe the whole process. Yeah, okay. So it was, uh, it, it didn't take that long. So it was more easy, maybe, uh, if we talk about the uh, um, emotionally for you, maybe <laughs> so you you didn't have to wait that much to have the news that you were. Yeah, there. it was pretty pretty quick. So I, like I think I had like maybe two weeks before the audition, something like that. I also had to do actually this like I forgot I had to do this video to YouTube of me playing Deep Unknown. So that was like the first step before the audition, but. Like after that, it was maybe like six, seven weeks, something like that in total from where I started to learn the songs. Yeah. And when was the first gig with Stratovarius? I think it was Tavastia in like maybe early July, something like that. How was the reaction? Sorry? How was the reaction from the audience? Uh... To be honest, I can't remember anything anything <laughs> about that show. Like I think I, I was so stressed and excited at the same time. Like it was like this uh, around like two hour show, like like a proper headline show. So my head was only kind of remembering everything and just getting through this show as smoothly as possible. So I can't really tell anything else about that. Don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it was quite, uh, uh, quite hard to, to, to think about uh, everything else uh, in that. Yeah, moment. yeah, 
definitely. But it was a good way to start. Like I had to have like the whole songbook together. So, so it was in that sense like for learning the material. It was a very good show. And also like after that we started the festival season. So it was kind of a good warm up for those gigs because those are a little bit more kind of turbulent. If, if I think about like the different drum sets and all that. So it's always nice to have like a club show because yeah. you have your own gear and all that. So in that sense, it was very nice. And uh, the, the last album was released in 2022, Survive. Um, when it comes to the, the drum part, uh, how is the making making of, of the songs? Uh, how do you put your your part in the in the music and how does the the the, the Stratovarius music nowadays uh, uh, start uh, start with the guitar start with the lyrics or uh, who is the, the the first one to to put on the table uh, material so basically Matthias is like our main composer nowadays and the survival album was pretty special because we took our time to make the songs and basically like most of the material actually was kind of composed in lap by Arvi at Timo's place. So Matthias went there, he had some ideas, maybe some kind of uh, demos and that kind of stuff ready already. And then they started to kind of do the demo vocals and like Jens was also participating there. So it was kind of, Matthias had had the skeletons and then they kind of worked that out with Timo and Jens and what comes to the drumming parts like there's usually like uh, I kind of use like this program drums as a guideline Matthias usually do kind of very detailed demo drums already but what happens there usually is like that I change like fills and kind of change the things that doesn't really make sense like drummer wise maybe so that's how I kind of bring my own flavor there yeah but yeah. it was very kind of pleasant pleasant album to do because we actually took the time because usually it's been like a little bit more chaotic and like when we start to do the drums there might still be missing a song or two and then it's kind of coming up in the session so this time I have like four or five years to kind of prepare slowly but surely. Yeah, yeah. So it was a different kind of process, let's say. Yeah, yeah, very different. Yeah, maybe it was the, the first and last time that it was uh, more relaxed. <laughs> I don't know, because uh, thinking about there was, yeah, uh, the, the pandemic and for, I think, most of the band that I talked with, uh, the making of of the album that came out uh, in this last in those last two years, uh, it was very different for everyone. The process, the, the, there was time that that normally there is not. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, indeed. And it was. Uh, everybody say that it was uh, really different and uh, interesting. But I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I don't know nowadays if uh, if you know the pandemic is over. Let's hope that uh, it's not going to happen again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, at least maybe with the COVID, I think we are kind of cleared, so to speak. Yeah, I think there is at the moment like this very huge COVID wave actually going on, but I think yeah. it's not that big of a deal anymore. Yeah. So it's it's more more easy. Yeah, but, indeed. But but what I had in my mind. I had something about Stratovarius. Well, let's go ahead because I can't remember what I had in my in my sure. mind. But uh, let's talk about uh, Smackbound because uh, you released uh, the last album, Ostage, uh, last uh, spring, was it? Uh, yeah, I think so. In May. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you, you had May. you had a few gigs. Uh, during the summer, am I right? And also yes. in the spring, you had something in Helsinki, maybe. Yeah, so 
briefly, we had like these kind of album release shows in Finland in mid-May. Yeah, we were playing in Helsinki, Tampere and Kouvola, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. And then we had like festivals shows in Tuska and mm, I don't think we were in Numerok this summer. Last summer, yeah. Uh, but then we did this John Smith festival as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you have any gigs coming in the future? Uh, not at the moment. It's like a little bit complicated with SmackBound at the moment because we are kind of very busy, like as a musician outside of yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like them lives in Switzerland and like we should basically kind of book the gigs that we will have like always like three or four gigs in a row or something like that to make it kind of sensible like money wise as well but we'll see what happens like it's like I have been touring with Strata Warriors the whole year so it's been a little bit challenging to find any suitable places for yeah. SmackDown shows. And also, Temo is now playing in Megadeth, so it's like he's also very yeah. busy at the moment. So, <laughs> yeah, I was wonder there's... wondering how do you manage everything because you are involved in several bands, and uh, how does it work? Do you have any time to stay at home and leave a let's say normal life because for a musician normal life is going on tour <laughs> but do you have yeah, time yeah. to relax also uh i could have time to relax but the thing is that i can't really relax yet i'm i'm, I'm learning like every day but but basically like none of these bands basically kind of have things happening kind of same time it's like many times like working with the band it's very kind of cyclical so you might have like few months a year that you're kind of working on the project then like you kind of just switch and then there's like next two months with the other band or something like that so it's very rare that all the bands are kind of doing constantly something at the same time but of course like my number one priority is always Stradivarius so so that's where I'm kind of putting my eggs in most yeah. of the time. Uh, what's your favorite uh, song to play with Stratovarius on the stage? Uh, if I choose maybe two, it's like there's very distinctive difference between the new songs and then the kind of this Jörg Jörg Michael era. So if I start from the new songs, I really like playing survive it's it's pretty cool it's fast and technical and very hard to play so it's it's a nice challenge every time and from the old songs i have to go maybe with farther time it's also kind of like i, I like the energy and it kind of has this punky fast wipe there so yeah. it's so much fun to play basically all that fast stuff like that's usually the funniest. Or play. challenging. Well, yeah, maybe not even like challenging, but it's just very kind of nice yeah. playing that stuff. You enjoy that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, are you still working as a drum teacher also? Yes, yes. How so many students uh, do you have? Um... It depends a little bit like how much I'm on the road, but Basically, like my week is like teaching from Monday until Friday if I don't have shows. Yeah. And it's like around five students a day. So it's like okay. 20, 25 students every week. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a full time job in a way. Yeah. What's the what's the best thing about the teaching? Uh I like to help people. I think that's the thing like with the teaching, like you can clearly see if you can make something work for the other person. And you are always there just to help them and 
kind of serve their needs. So I think just like that, yeah, in yeah. general, that's the most kind of gratifying thing about teaching. Yeah, yeah, it's it's always nice to help people. Also with my job, I I help people <laughs> to get better. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm a physiotherapist in in my normal in my normal life. So that's yeah, yeah. helping people is something beautiful. So yeah, yeah indeed, I, indeed. I I feel I feel that. Uh, but uh, what? Let's get back on uh, on the live playing. Uh, um, what do you do before going on stage? Uh, well, basically, like I start to prepare when I wake up, basically for the show nowadays. Especially, especially if I'm touring, because the, it's like the food is always a little bit like so so and that so uh, what I basically try to do I drink lots of water also I try to have some kind of like electrolyte kind of liquids like Powerade or something like that before the show and also I try to eat a lot it's, it's like a problem for me like I usually when I go to a tour I, I will lose like weight if I'm not really kind of overeating all the time so I just make sure that I'm getting like proper nutrition before the show Important. yeah yeah and then like the actual like warm-up before the show I'm just playing like the pads so I have a bass drum pad double pedal and also pads for my hands so I'm just basically doing these kind of activation exercises like getting my ankles kind of relaxed and like just reviewing some very kind of tough places from the songs for example the survive song yeah it's always that intro beat which is very tough and it's the first thing i have to do when i get to a stage so i just play that over and over again like as my warm-up yeah yeah and there's many other pieces from the other songs as well that i just kind of review and shuffle randomly and it's like one hour before show i just do that yeah and what is the first thing that you do when you get off the stage? Uh, usually I drink water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the first thing. Yeah. And after that, it's basically like I get my warm up kit, tear down, and take it to our crew. After that, it's time to chill. But it's yeah. it's kind of. Nothing fancy happens after a show. It's, yeah. it's like very yeah. kind of boring. <laughs> I remember, you know, uh, this summer at Boris Pere, um, I did the interview with a Turmion Katilot and the sack was the first thing that I do after after the show. I take the clothes off. <laughs> it's so warm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I can, uh, I, I think that uh, being on a stage is like a, uh, work out or even more and um, I think for drummer is is intense maybe yeah, it's de de may de maybe de even de more than uh, everyone else yeah I think it's like a singer and a drummer they are usually like yeah the most kind of under the pressure there it, it's very okay. physical like for a drummer so that's the reason I lose the weight if I don't Pay attention and eat enough pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now let's go and talk about metal in general. So when did you start to listen to metal? Uh, basically, I have been listening to metal as long as I can remember. I think like my first experience with like this kind of hard rock music was when I was maybe three or four, something like that. My dad had like a very good collection of like the kind of classic rock and classic hard rock stuff. So I just picked up picked up like Scorpions and Iron Maiden from there. And then it just kept on kind of evolving from there. Slowly getting like the more aggressive music like power metal and then of course like getting the black metal and death metal and now after that came to jazz and all that. So it's a kind of ongoing process. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 
What's your favorite band if you have one? <laughs> that that's an impossible question. It depends on the season, on the I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the day. <laughs> Lately, I have been listening a lot of Lorna Shore, but yeah. I can I can say that it's my favorite band. But it goes but in the season. So. It's a big thing. Yeah, I yeah. can relate. Lorna Shore has been uh, in the last uh, two years. Uh, big, big. Also, yeah, in yeah. Well, yeah, the Pain Remains album is fantastic. Yeah, I think that Pain Remains uh, is the best album of 2022. I, I don't know, yeah. I have been listening to that album like over and over. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, same here. But uh, I can't tell if it's the best album of 2022. Like, there were a uh, lot of good albums, uh, so but uh, I don't know. It's the one that I have been listening more. If if I check about on Spotify, even if Spotify is not the best place where to listen music, everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah. But when I'm going around uh, walking or uh, on the bus, I cannot have uh, anything else. So yeah, <laughs> Spotify yeah. is a good way to take the music with you when yeah, there is yeah. not an, anymore the M. MP3, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, it's definitely a great album. Yeah. I think I listened that every day on the tour, so it was my touring album. So to okay, uh, talking about uh, albums, metal albums, uh, uh, which one do you think is the most influent album for you? Another. Uh, Difficult one. Yeah, but actually, this is kind of the easy one. I must go with Iron Maiden's Seventh Son of the Seventh Son, because that was my first Iron Maiden album I listened, and I got very kind of inspired from the drumming on that album. Yeah. And I also had this, like, my dad had this VHS from the same tour of Iron Maiden, so... I watched that like a thousand times. So that's, that was my early kind of drumming education, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, is your father also a musician? No, he's just like listening a lot of music. Okay. I think that he's really proud of you. I don't know about that. <laughs> I try to be a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the first gig, metal gig, the first band that you have seen live? It was also Iron Maiden, I think, like back in 98, probably, in Helsinki, doing their, this virtual XI uh, tour. Okay. And what what's the best gig ever that you ever seen? That's a tough one. <laughs> It's very hard to kind of tell. It's also like I haven't been into many concerts lately, but let's say I I say one from the childhood and maybe one kind of from the la recent years. So maybe I go with Bruce Dickinson in Pakkahuone back in like 98 or 99, something like that. Okay. It was the Chemical Wedding Tour, and that's a fantastic album. Yeah. So, and also, it was a very important album for me, so it was a very cool gig to see. And then, maybe from the recent ones, maybe I go with Vader. It was a waiter. Waiter was playing like in seventy thousand tons of metal, maybe two thousand sixteen, something like that, yeah. or two thousand eighteen. Can't remember, but we were playing yeah. there as well. So it was very cool to see Waiter live. It, it, it's such a great live band. Yeah, it's one of those bands that uh, I need to see live. Maybe one day. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. I get you. It, it's a total yeah. live music. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to my jar of random topics and let's see what we get. 
what we are Exciting. going to talk <laughs> about. So the first one is, uh, well, colors. Uh, so what's your favorite color? I must say two different colors. Yeah. Uh, uh, for clothing, all black. That's like my favorite color. But I'm a fly fisherman. So if I say like my favorite color for the fly, I have to go with banana yellow. It's okay. very important. <laughs> <laughs> I think about the clothes, uh, black is always the good choice. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, it goes well with everything. And yeah, it's always when, in the fashion. Yeah, and then uh, if something, if you are uh, eating some food and something drop on you, it's it's easy to clean up. It, it's not that big yes. of a deal. <laughs> At least a day. disaster, and uh, and that's what happened with <laughs> with food. Uh, but. I don't know. There is anything else that we can talk about colors. I think it's it's not that uh, that big of a, of a topic. Let's take another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's have uh, this this one feels art. So, uh, yeah, of course you love music. You are a musician. You do art, but. Uh, there is any other kind of art that you enjoy? Uh, well, I like to watch like good paintings. That's something I enjoy. And it's also like my family actually have this kind of, we are selling art. Okay. So I have kind of connection to that side as well. I don't do any kind of art like that, but I appreciate like good paintings and like, yeah. All do that like, stuff. Yeah. Do you like to go to museums to watch? To, yeah, to sure. The art pieces that. Yeah. yeah, and also like private collections, all that. Like, yeah. it, it's yeah. it, interesting to me. There is any kind of uh, any any style that you prefer, or uh, you just uh, enjoy everything. Uh well, I'm not that much into kind of this old-fashioned, like very classic style so maybe if i had to say like something maybe like very kind of modern yeah abstract kind of stuff that's usually what rocks my boat yeah yeah and uh, do you own any any art piece at home that that you yeah own? yeah yes plenty <laughs> yeah that's nice yeah. yeah i always want to have like paintings on my yeah walls <laughs> yeah yeah it's nice but let's have another another one because the colors one was a bit i did i did not have any any other questions so let's get <laughs> a third one <laughs> okay now we have animals uh, what's your favorite animal uh red panda maybe oh, okay a cute one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, red pandas you, are cool. Yeah. Do you do you own any any pet? Uh, well, I used to have a cat, but uh, at the moment I don't have any any pets here. My parents have like a dog, Porgy. It's also very cute. Yeah. But basically, like I like all animals, and it's like. Kind of, I'm just getting more fond of them. Like the older I get, so, so yeah. all the animals are cool. That's but true. if I must say like one or two, it's definitely red panda or raccoon or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Otters. Is, you know, there is this page on Instagram about raccoons. I, I have to check and tell you what what because it's so fun. It's uh, memes, memes. Well, what's in English the the right word, but what what was raccoon? I I have to tell you. Maybe you know this page, but is this is a uh, raccoon lovers raccoon memes? Yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> that's something that come on Instagram all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like my feed is full of red pandas and raccoons. Yeah, I yeah, think that it's my fantastic. 
my Instagram is like, uh, well, when it comes to animals, uh, a, bit, a bit of everything. I don't know why Instagram wants me to watch uh, Capybara's videos. Oh, yeah, Capybara's. <laughs> but but I love them. They three. are so fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there are all those uh, dogs. And then the uh, cats. Um, metal metal cats what's what's that i don't know it's so fun they put some uh, death core playing and the cats doing things yeah it's, yeah <laughs> fantastic stuff something. yeah but uh, if uh if if there is another life i mean uh, after we died if there is another life after um and uh, you who could choose an animal to to be in the next life? What it would be? Uh, I must say a Salomon, maybe. Okay. It's like it's a kind of tragic life they have. Like it's like full of hard work, but the whole life cycle is like as a fisherman, it's like very kind of fascinating. Yeah. The whole yeah. whole like how they get bored in a river and then they go to the sea to eat and then they come back to a river and all that. So maybe a sound or a red band. Yeah. Can't decide. I always say that uh, I may be a cat, a fat one, because everyone say that fat cats are cute and fat cats uh, just are like living like kings. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I would be like, yeah, the cat is like, you know, in the in the house is the, the boss. And that's yeah, definitely that are human. So yeah, it will be a nice life. I, I just look to my cats and they are living like the the great life. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I I would like to to do the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sounds like a nice life. The dream. Yeah, yeah because you can be active. Or not as a cat. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so I think it, it it can fit on me. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's go and talk about uh, the most important topic uh, about this uh, this talk show podcast or whatever you want to call it. That is pizza. So you like pizza, I think. Yes. Yes. Of course. Good. And uh, what is your favorite pizza? Uh, if I have to choose one, it's like Diabola, maybe. I like that very much. And if I have to choose the place where I would have that, maybe Kapperi in Oulun Kyla here in Helsinki. It's like excellent Diabola there. I haven't been there. Maybe next time that I'm in Helsinki area, I may go, I may go to taste yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, because I have been well, I have I haven't been that much in Helsinki. Uh, last time I was for Tuska, and before Tuska, I decided I have to go to Via Tribunali, and uh, it was it was That's a, also very uh, good. Yeah, so I I was satisfied. Uh, I can say that in Pori there is a, not a real Italian pizzeria yet. There are three that that are good uh, but not yet there <laughs> there is still that something missing but yeah yeah or they are adding too much of something <laughs> but yeah and uh, where did you eat the the best pizza ever uh actually i might have to go with that same option so mm -hmm. diavolo in Kappere. It's like I have lots of experience like eating different pizzas around the world because our after show food is basically after every show we will get like local pizza. But I would say like 90% of time it's like just rubbish kind of very bad kind of unedible kind of so, kind of something pizza like but yeah, not, not really good. You are not the first one to saying that uh, um, this. Um, there were other that told that after gig they always have pizza and uh, 
the pizza that uh, they are eating is not not good it's it's terrible normally so yeah um, it can happen even in italy yeah so. yeah actually there was corona <laughs> who was that I, i'm thinking i who was that say that the worst pizza that he hit was in in italy after a gig I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> it yeah, was, yeah. But but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, to have a good pizza, you have to know the places and where to go. Yeah, indeed. Even though now we had like excellent after show pizza in Milan, like after that show that I talked about, like right. I think that was like because Matthias is kind of a foodie. So he googled a little bit like that pizza was actually like from this kind of top 50 best in the world or something like that. I don't remember. Okay. But it, it it was a decent one. Very good. Yeah. I remember once uh, I was in Croatia for uh, my friend's birthday. And it was uh, when I was still living in in Italy. Uh, I'm from the border with Slovenia, so it was not that big of a, of a deal to go to Croatia for one night yeah, yeah. One night out. So they ordered this pizza, and it was <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> it, it I hit because you know food is food, but it was not good. <laughs> yeah, it can happen. Anywhere in the world. And today I was to the store uh, and uh, I don't know why I walk in front of the of the free refrigerator and there were those pizzas, something new, uh, that cost almost eight euros and frozen pizza. And I was thinking, yeah. who the hell is buying uh, eight euros of frozen pizza? It doesn't make sense. But then the there were three kind of this pizza. There were pineapple and ham, um, pepperoni, and then there was uh, mozzarella. And uh, the only left was mozzarella. Everything else was sold. And then I was thinking, why? <laughs> and why someone is taking a frozen pizza for that much money? Yeah, um, I think it's, it's that's, just that's part curious. of convenience. Yeah, it's, it's it's like a big market in Finland, I think nowadays, like this frozen pizza kind of thing. So yeah. it doesn't surprise me at all, actually. It's it, for me, it was interesting. If I have to spend more than uh, than five euros, then uh, then I got to buy it from somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, it, it's <laughs> of, of course very expensive for a frozen yeah. pizza, but but maybe it's, it's really good. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then there is the the question. Uh, that divide the world in two. Does pineapple belong to pizza? Ha <laughs> ha, the classic. Uh, I had to be in a gray zone in between, like some days I like it and some days I don't. So it depends. It depends. Yeah. But I will put you on the yes because sometimes you hit it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that uh, all... Finnish people that I interview for Metal Pizza say yes so far. I think it's kind of a classic here in Finland. Like it's usually yeah. like pineapple ham, that kind of combo that we have here. So that must be the reason. It may be. But you know, uh I always I always think about uh, the first time that uh, I saw Fins put uh, peach on pizza. I was like shocked. Yeah, <laughs> that that was or the banana. weirdest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. There's it's... this interesting stuff happening there. Yeah, <laughs> and I was Actually... I was thinking maybe as a dessert, if you do like a um, sweet pizza, you put some Nutella and then you put fruits on uh, and then some some whipped cream. Then yeah, it's fine, but no, it was with uh, was that some 
Maybe like a seafood um, kind of? Yeah, some fish or meat. I don't know. There was a lot of things going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, what's going on there? <laughs> Definitely it, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So com coming from Italy to Finland and seeing that was like, um, yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't like uh, uh, mixing uh, sweet with uh, salty. Uh, so for me, it's uh, like always a no. It's, it's a big no. It's uh, for me, it's, uh, like fruits are dessert. So it doesn't work. Also in Italy, there are people nowadays doing uh, was strawberry pizza or some okay. berries uh, thing uh, and honey. But yeah, I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Sounds very exotic. Yeah, so maybe it works for some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you have yeah. tasted to know it. Yeah, I I think that pineapple, I have had uh, pineapple on my pizza, but I took the pineapple off. <laughs> like I used to do with everything that there is something inside that I don't like. Let's take off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, a bit solution. I'm a bit picky, <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, uh, we are at the end of this uh, interview. Uh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And, thank you. Uh, I'm glad that you had time to, to be my guest. Yeah, uh, sure. My pleasure. Would you like to say something to your fans and people that are watching this interview? Mm. Stay metal and enjoy your pizza. <laughs> yeah. With pineapples or without pineapples. We are not. Everything goes. <laughs> 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 it does.